Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back to Lecture 3, Chapter 2. In this lecture, I'm going to work out an example where we can do a complete geometric analysis of the solution structure in phase space. And this is a simple example of Poincaré's point of view. Okay, here's the ODE that I'm going to consider. It's one-dimensional autonomous. x dot equals x minus x cubed. Uh, you notice I don't have an initial condition written down. There's a point behind that. So, what do we do? We know that we have an and representation of the solution. We derived that in chapter one in an integral form that we could do that, but I'm going to carry out a geometric analysis in phase space. And this really illustrates the point of view, the qualitative point of view of Poincaré for analyzing differential equations. Rather than looking for an analytical form for a particular solution satisfying a particular initial condition, Instead, he asked, how do all solutions relate to each other? What is their geometry in the full phase space for that vector field? Okay, so how do you start? For autonomous ODEs, what I always say is do the easiest thing first. Find all the equilibrium points. Okay, x minus x cubed. Well, you can see what they are. There are three of them, x equals zero and x equal plus or minus one. And we can easily plot them in the phase plane. So on the next page, you see the phase space and the three equilibrium points. 0, 1, and minus 1. Okay, don't worry about the arrows yet. Uh, but what do we see up, up at the graph directly above? Well, what we see is the vector field. I plotted the vector field, x minus x cubed. And you can see that as x goes to minus infinity, it goes to plus infinity. As x goes to infinity, it goes to minus infinity. It has three zeros. And those correspond to the three equilibrium points. And the point I wanted to make is the sign of the vector field between the equilibrium points. Is it positive or is it negative? Well, it's positive between 0 and 1, and that's why I indicated that the motion is from left to right with this particular arrow direction. It's negative for x greater than 1, for any initial condition I pick, trajectories would move from left, from right to left. And it's negative between minus 1 and 1. And the direction would be from right to left. And it's positive, And you, you get the idea. So in this way, I know everything about the solutions to this differential equation. And all I did was plot the equilibrium points and the direction of motion in between the equilibrium points. OK, so I could find analytical forms for the solution. But what you have here is a very complete picture of all the possible dynamics in the phase space, the three equilibrium points, and what trajectories do in between them. You also see two examples of heteroclinic connections. The connection between 0 and 1, and the connection between 0 and minus 1. That is the trajectory that if you pick any initial condition between 0 and 1. If you look at the trajectory through that initial condition, it will approach asymptotically in time the equilibrium point at 1. 
in negative time, it will approach asymptotically. It never gets there until t goes reaches infinity, but think about that. It will approach the origin. And similarly for the heteroclinic connection between minus 1 and 1. There aren't any homoclinic connections and there are not any periodic orbits. And we'll come back to that later. So this is a good time to introduce the notion of an invariant set. Invariant sets are very important for a number of reasons in um, the study of ODEs and dynamical systems. So a set in the phase space, call it M, it's said to be invariant. And it's a very simple idea. If you take an initial condition in that set and you look at the trajectory through that, for all time, it stays in that set. Okay, for all time. All right, now one could play games with the invariant set. Are they closed? Are they, what's the dimensionality? Oh, and the various things. But right now I just want to be, make it, keep it very general about invariant set. One could talk about invariant sets with a particular direction of time, positive invariant sets. So a set would be positive invariant if you start in it and you stay in it for all time between zero and infinity. And you could talk about negative invariant sets and so on. So if you go back to this example, what do we see? What are the invariant sets? Oh, there are a lot of them. Any trajectory it, or solution is an invariant set. You, you start on it, you stay on it. It's the trajectory. You trace it out in the, as a curve in phase space. So the three equilibrium points are trivial examples of invariant sets. You start on them, you just sit in that zero dimensional invariant set. Also, the intervals between zero and one, that's an invariant set. And the interval between minus one and zero, that's an invariant set. And the interval between uh, one and infinity and minus infinity and minus one, those would be invariant sets. Okay, there's a lot going on here with these invariant sets that we're going to examine in much detail later on. But for now, this uh, this this should be of interest. It should raise a lot of questions if you start to think about these notions. But also, you should be impressed with the fact that you know everything about all possible solutions that can occur for this ODE. You could solve for analytical forms if you needed to, um, but, and you can ask the question, well, this is fine for one dimension, but what if you go to more dimensions? Good question. Lots of interesting research problems there. Okay, that finishes chapter two. I want to talk a bit about the problems at the end of chapter two in the next lecture. So bye for now.